My name is Sister Karen Kelly. Uh, I entered the congregation in 1991, made my first vows in 95. So it's been 21 years since I've been a vowed CND. Um, I am a high school physics teacher. I teach math and a few other things on the side when I have to, but really, it's all about physics. I guess I first considered a religious vocation maybe my last year or so of high school. Uh, I grew up with a, a group of sisters in our parish. Um, they weren't the C&Ds, but I, they, you know, there was something there. Um, I tried my best to ignore it. I went to St. Francis Xavier University and ended up living in a residence owned and run by the C&Ds. Um, really, I lived there because it was, they had single rooms and I didn't want a room with anyone. Um, but in the end, met the C&Ds and I guess from that point on, it was kind of like, if I became a sister, I knew they were the group. And at the end of my fourth year, I decided to go on and do my master's in physics because I didn't know any nuns that had their master's in physics and I thought that might remove me from the gene pool. Like, you know, that, that uh, then I wouldn't be eligible to be and that would end everything and I could be the get out of the situation easily card sort of thing. Um, but I did kind of make a deal with God that said if it's still there after those two years then I would look at it. And I figured if it could survive physics it would survive anything. After doing a lot of discernment then I entered the congregation and it's been good. It's been the right thing for me. It wasn't a popular life choice and I know through university I didn't talk to many people about it because it, I, I, I really didn't want to put myself out there until I knew that maybe it was real. I kept trying to get God to write it on the sky for me so that I, you know, I wanted something in concrete writing, although I guess if it was on the sky it would disappear. Um, but there was part of me that was like, I didn't want to tell anyone until, until I knew. And I can remember uh, one person in my family saying to me one day, you would never think about doing something crazy and throwing your life away and becoming a sister, would you? And I mean, I hadn't said it out loud at that point, and so it was like, <gasps> and then one of my other siblings said, maybe she wouldn't think that was throwing your life away. And I was like, oh, so maybe, maybe someone would understand if I said this. But as for friends, it was tough telling them, and, and I really didn't want to. I, I had a, a boyfriend throughout some of my university years, even while it was going on in my head. I needed to know there were options, and I need, it's hard to make a choice if there's no other options, if it's just, it's just one thing. And, and being a scientist, I wanted answers, like I wanted, Tell me the procedure, like, to, like, give me a lab, tell me the procedure, the steps to do so that I can get to the conclusion. And I kept wanting that in my own vocational story. Like, I wanted someone to tell me what to do to find out what the right, the, the conclusion was going to be. How do I get to, do I enter or not? Um, but really, it's about living the question. And I, uh, you know, now that I'm older, old, older, it's easier to say, but I did not like it back then. I just, I wanted someone to tell me, do this. No one would though. For me, I see them so intimately connected and there's a line that I use with my students all the time as I teach them the physics of the world and how wonderfully symmetrical everything is and how perfectly everything works and how if anything was just a little out of line it wouldn't and, and we're talking on the planet scale all the way down to the electron scale and the quantum scale and I often say to them, um, you know, that the, the designer of the universe, the creator of the universe, is really the physicist extraordinaire. And, and then I will say to them, isn't it any wonder that he's my main dude? Like, <laughs> that he's my main guy? Uh, and, and they all appreciate that.